being able to start every day off like this is just the most wonderful experience it really is it's so relaxing An absolutely stark difference to what it was like back at uh, back at Tahiti having to uh, concentrate every morning on shifting hundreds of tons of manure and slurry from one point to another frantically going back and to yeah this is just wonderful coming out here on the back of my horse into my pasture checking on my cattle it's just brilliant it really is so clara's out giving her horse a bit of a gallop over on the mountains over there she's been uh, stretching the legs of that thing and absolutely enjoying every minute of it life here up in montana is beautiful it really is but we've got a bit of work ahead of us but we can take our time we can relax that's the whole point of this well one of the whole points of this is just to be able to take things in our stride we've got two fields of lentils to harvest 175 acres in total we've got 85 acres of peas to harvest we've got 90 acres of canola to harvest um but as i say we've got a couple of months to do it so i'm not gonna uh, i'm not gonna stress i'm not gonna rush i'm not gonna you know lose my mind over things we're all good we've got uh, we've got plenty of time ahead of us so that's why i can i can afford just to come out here cast my eye over my cattle gone full cowboy spec i've bought myself a cowboy hat um i've got myself some cowboy boots and everything and i have also got a lasso and fortunately i haven't had to use it yet and it's a good job i haven't because uh, i think i'm going to need a few lessons but i am british at the end of the day British men don't do cowboy, do we? <laughs> so I need to learn. Uh, Clara's a bit of a dab hand with it, but fortunately we've not had to put anything to the test like that because uh, we haven't had any escaped cattle, thankfully, up to now. Touch wood. I'm sure it'll happen in time. The fences I've got surrounding the pasture aren't particularly big or particularly strong, but and these uh, every one of my cattle are quite chunky things, pretty heavy, so it's not going to take much strength of theirs just to uh, force their way through. But... They all seem happy enough. Got plenty of grass to graze on. They're all good. So yeah, I think uh, today's work, I'd like to put my new fent to the test and I'd like to put the land all to the test. I think what I'd like to do, even though I do have hundreds of acres to harvest, as I said, we've got plenty of time to do that. I would like to run that new land all, see how that performs, because it is a cultivator and a mulcher built into one. So I'm uh, very keen to give that a run. So we're going uh, to stick with the field that we harvested last time. The field of lentils. We've got almost 80 tons now sitting in the silo, which was a pretty decent yield from that field, considering I believe there wasn't a huge amount of fertilizer in the soil. It was just a, a, a very basic harvest, as it were. The combine performed well, of course, it's running well. It's actually sat next to the fuel tank at the minute. We need to uh, top that up. It was quite a thirsty job. It's uh, started off full and it's just under a quarter of a tank now. So uh, that needs topping up. But yeah, I think uh, I'm very much very keen to be uh, testing that fent and the land all out together. So let's get Odin here back to his uh, little home up here. And get cracking on, eh? We have all my new bits of equipment that I got hold of. Um, I've found a place for it all to live, kind of. Dotted around in a few of the workshops. Now, again, in a stark comparison to what it was like back on Tahiti, the workshops are... They've got something in each of them, but they're not rammed full like they were back at Tahiti. There's just a, there's a nice bit of space, but less machinery, less to go wrong, I suppose. We've got pretty much the basics of what we need to keep us going at the minute on uh, up here. Nice bit of space there for the 715 to live. There's my Landol that I'm going to be hooking up very soon. We've got the Combine here ready to fill up with a bit of fuel. Now, now speaking of the Combine, actually, I've got something on order. I need to go and pick it up uh, at some point this afternoon, actually, but I bought... It's called a bushel plus system, uh, and it's a bit of fancy electronic wizardry that you uh, essentially you connect to the back under the axle here of the combine harvester, and it keeps all the calibration settings at optimum level. Essentially, you keep that connected, and the people have reported increasing increases of yields up to ten percent. Um, it wasn't particularly expensive, so I've ordered one of those, and I'm uh, I'm going to make my way back down to see Tanner at the uh, at the dealership in a few hours' time. Go and pick that up. We'll, we'll go pick it up in the pickup truck and see if we can get to get it fitted uh but yeah that's a pretty good thing um because like i said the, the yield from the lentils wasn't too bad um so if we can increase that just by making sure that the combine harvester is running at its absolute absolute optimum all day long it's a no-brainer really now speaking of the lentils as well i've also been on the phone to 
some of the gentlemen over at Loma Grain, one of the local grain buyers, uh, just inquiring about when would be the best time that they would consider buying my lentils, essentially. Uh, they've told us that the best price, the best time for to, to sell is usually about June and July time, um, and they will pay upwards of $540 per tonne. Uh, based on what we've got just in there at the minute, just from that one field alone at 80 tonnes, that's $43,000. So when we factor in what we'll get from the other two lentil fields as well, that could be a really nice tidy income come next year. Now don't worry, we're not, obviously we're not destitute. Money-wise, we're fine. We really are after 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 the big move from Tahitian, selling all the equipment, selling the farm. The bank account is well blessed, don't get me wrong. So I'm not, uh, I'm not scraping around for cash, but uh, needless to say, still got to get to keep the money coming in haven't i so anyway we need to crack on with a bit of work don't we so i'm going to get this uh land all hooked up to this fence i've been looking forward to this for quite a while putting this beauty to a bit of work so we'll uh, we'll do just that all right gently does it gently does it there you go. That should be about right. Oh, just about perfect, if I don't say so myself. Lovely stuff. So, hopefully this job isn't going to take me too long. It's a hefty thing, this. It's just uh, just under 12 tonnes in weight, but uh, it's got a 10, 10 point something working width, so hopefully it's not going to take too long in this field. But uh, we shall see. We've got 56 acres to run with it today. So it's not uh, it's not our biggest field, but definitely going to take me a couple of hours, I reckon. I've left the header out here just uh, to keep us ready, to get us ready for when we do jump into the combine next. There's no point in me wrangling that back into the yard for no reason. Right, let's get this thing unfolded, shall we? Jump out and have a quick look, see. Yeah, it's quite a bit of kit, this. As I say, a cultivator and a mulcher in one. That wasn't bad guesstimating, was it? Almost up to the uh, edge of the field. <laughs> but yeah. Quite a bit of kit. So. Let's get cracking.
think I want you Someday Tell you what, this is a mighty tractor, and I need to be very careful because there's a massive drop down there, about 200 foot. <laughs> I would have missed a bit there, goodness. But yeah, this is a quality machine. Now, Tanner told me when I picked up this Landol that it requires about 300 horsepower, and this Vario is exactly on the nail, 300 horsepower. So I knew I was going to be cutting it fine power-wise, I, I wanted to give it a try, but uh, he told me that the running speed of this thing should be about 11 miles an hour, and we've been running at about 11 miles an hour so far for the last couple of hours. So, so far, so good. Really enjoying this tractor. It's an absolute beast. And the Landol, well, what can I say? It's left, it's leaving a beautifully smooth, even, stubble tillage texture on the, uh, on the field here. So, uh, can't complain. And that, I believe, is us. Lovely stuff. Do need to go and get that bit over there that I missed. Got to uh, exercise the OCD and all that. Can't leave that little patch after spending so much time. But yeah, very happy with that. Very happy indeed. So, I'm going to go and grab that little bit that I missed. And then get back to the uh, get back to the farm. And I think what I'm going to do, uh, I've spoke to Tanner on the phone again recently. I'm going to go down and pick up that uh, bushel plus loss, loss measurement system. I think that's what it's called. Uh, get get back up to the farm. I'm going to fit that to the harvester as quickly as I can. It might take a little while. Where's my little bit? There it is. There it is. Yeah, it might take me a little while to fit it. There's a few electronics involved, and uh, oh goodness, another bit over here. <laughs> How many bits have I missed? I thought I was doing quite well. I might have to uh, cast my eye over the rest of the place. I haven't uh, seen any other bits that I've missed, to be fair, so maybe there's not too many. No. Let's get that folded up. Come on. Let's get back. So, yeah. I'm going to get down to the shop, pick up this uh, Bushel Plus system, see what we can make of that. Get it fitted to the harvester, and then get out in the field with it. Clara's back at the farm waiting for me now. She's back from her gallop. <laughs> um, now I know I've got no information to judge the uh, the, ben the benefits of this Bushel Plus system on yet. Obviously we harvested this field, but this is a relatively unprepped field. That one is as well. Um, so what we get out of it will be what we get out of it. But in the fullness of time, when we start getting around to really prepping the fields and getting everything as it should be, soil quality, nutrition, pH values in nitrogen and whatnot, we'll start to be able to uh, get an idea of the benefits of having that Bushel Plus system. And for two grand, I can't really complain, can I? It's a relatively cheap addition to the farm that could bring massive benefits when it comes to yield from the fields. So going to tidy this lot away it does need it in fact now I'm going to park it up at the wash area that we've got over here for now I'm not going to wash it yet I'll do that in a wee while in fact is this even wide enough let's have a look shall we the tractor's alright I'm not too sure I'm not them barrels over oh look at that Look at that. Absolutely perfect. Right. You can stay there and await your wash. I'm going to go and uh, jump in the pickup truck and get on down to the shop. Look at that. It was meant to be, wasn't it? <laughs> 
I love it when a plan comes together. Right. I'll see you all down at the shop. Oh, here's something quite interesting, actually. I'll just pull in here. I just learnt about this the other day. This area, Loma, in Montana, where we are, is actually steeped with some quite interesting history. Now, I won't, uh, I won't spend too long here. I'm just going to potentially do this another day. We'll come for a bit of a walk. Maybe me and Clara might come and investigate this and just learn a bit. But, uh, but yeah, steeped in some pretty important history. The uh, Lewis and Clark Expedition of 1804, the Corps of Discovery, commissioned by President Thomas Jefferson. Um, this area plays a big part in the history of that expedition. Um, there's a lot to learn just from here, from this big information board. And also, there's a little bit of a, a walk up this uh, up this trail and up and round the headland of the hills here. There's a few information points set into the ground where you can learn a bit of information, which I thought was really cool. Now, I, I, like I say, I keep meaning to come up here and uh, have a bit of a read. So I've got all the time in the world to do that now, so we'll potentially do that one day. But yeah, I just thought I'd uh, show you that. This is kind of interesting. While I was on the way to the shop, we'll come and spend a bit more time here when we can. But yeah, I do like a little bit of history. And it seems like there's a lot here. I was told about it by uh, one of the local couples in the town, uh, Mar and Par, as they're collectively and uh, affectionately known. Um, Par runs the Loma Mart, and Mar runs the Loma Cafe. Uh, they've been married. They're clearly a couple who've been married for many years. They're quite old, but they uh, they're quite an infamous couple in the local town here. Lovely people, clearly. But, uh, but yeah, they told me about that. They said I should check that bit out. So maybe one day we'll come and have a little bit of a walk and a bit of a history tour. Anyway. Back to the shop. Pick up our Bushel Plus system. And we'll get, in, uh, get back to the farm. And get another harvest under our belt, shall we? So this is it. As simple as it looks, this is just something that you bolt to the underside rear axle of the combine harvester. And magic and wizardry happens, and you get a better yield from your field, apparently. It's very interesting. So let's get it back to the farm, see if we can uh, get it fitted, and crack on. Well, that didn't take too long at all now. As you can see, we've got it all fitted. So, we've got it mounted right underneath the rear axle. It's uh, wired into the loom. It's connected up there, into the brain of the combine, as it were. And, uh, for all intents and purposes, I believe, that's it. Now, what this, what this is going to do is essentially keep the combine keep the combine calibrated to its optimum levels. Keep all the numbers exactly where they should be. And, like I, like I think I mentioned before, that potentially gives us a, 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 a an available yield increase of anywhere up to 10 percent so uh considering the size of our fields 10 percent could be quite a quite a big value to be honest so uh it's taken me what half an hour 35 minutes 40 minutes to get that fitted it's not too bad at all just had to drill a couple of holes in the bottom of the axle there and uh, mount it in jobs are good un. so yeah this thing's ready to go now now i just need to fill this up with fuel that is a uh, it's quite a lengthy process considering the size of the tank on this thing. But uh, yeah, we'll get this uh, topped up with a bit of go-go juice. And uh, get ourselves back into the field. Get another field of lentils harvested. Right, let's get to it. Our 
I can afford a bit more swinging around space here now. Now oh, that this field's empty, this harvester makes some crazy noises, doesn't it? <laughs> Sounds awesome. Right, where are we? That should do us, I think. Let's just pull back a couple of feet. That'll do. Let's get this PTO connected. Lovely stuff. Nice. Right. Clara should be following me any moment now. She's still going to be running in the quaddy with the big trailer for now. I think I do need to consider getting a kind of somewhere in the middle tractor. Now, obviously, the Fent, the Vario that we've just been running with the Landol, obviously, that's got the big eight wheel set up. Uh, and the quaddy is obviously, that's a whopper, isn't it? So I could do with something that's kind of in the middle, single wheels that'll be good for uh, running grain carts. So. Maybe that's another purchase that I need to consider. Right, here we are. Lentil field number two. Let's get on it. Right, there goes Clara with the last of it. 
Not a bad job and all, if I don't say so myself. Now this field was a little bit bigger than the one over the road there, so there's likely going to be a few more tons in the silo, but until Clara's got that last bit in there, we don't know exactly what we've got. So, let me uh, get everything loaded up here. Let's uh, get rid of that PTO, take that out of there. a tough one, Jay, judging your distances from your header trailers, but let's give that one a go. There we are. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Well, this can stay open now again anyway. There's no point in uh, wrangling that back into the yard. We'll be digging it back out again, no doubt, in the next few days, because we've still got another field of lentils down the hill there. And we've also got the canola to get sorted as well. Right. This needs parking back up against uh, next to the diesel tank used up just over three quarters of the tank of this one during that uh, job so yeah we'll get that one filled up so let's go check out what numbers we've got eh? right well now it's all loaded in i can tell you that we have got stowed away in the silo right now 206.5 tons of lentils which is pretty damn good the field we harvested first was 56.24 acres uh the one we've just done is just uh, just over 76 or just under 77 actually 76.8 to be precise uh we've got 126 and a half tons off that field this then so the grand total 206 and a half so if we were to sell everything at best sell time at the price that we can get for it in uh, mid summer time next year june july time uh we're at 112,000 or just under 113,000 dollars so that's not bad but we've still got another 98 acres down the hill there to add into this so we need to crack on with that but for now i'm going to go and grab myself some lunch and i'm going to have a look at the classifiers because i've been doing that while i've been harvesting there as well now that i've got uh, a bit of an idea in my mind about potentially buying another tractor you just can't stop me so i have uh, i've seen a particularly nice john deere 9rt hey eh? been good see looking at green ones as well i'm uh, like i said i'm a changed man <laughs> strongly considering uh, one of those it looks really nice uh, a dedicated grain cart tractor essentially i do quite like the idea of a 9rt i have seen an 1167 fent as well which is a similar design running on tracks really nice looking thing um decent amount of power so yeah there's a couple of used ones of them lurking around going for reasonable money so we'll consider them but yeah for now i need to grab myself some lunch and keep looking at the classifieds We'll be right